So this video is just a way of highlighting or giving some exam feedback to students. It's basically highlighting those topics that have presented as difficult in recent exams and a way of highlighting those things, those topics that need that extra bit of revision. Most of this video is to do with plants and plant diagrams, which are often tricky, and the first of which is the root. And this is a longitudinal section of a root, and you must be able to mark in and draw in those four zones. It's not only the zones that you need to know, you need to be able to mark in all of these key features. So the xylem, the phloem, the apical meristem, the root cap, the ground tissue, and the root hair. So the trickiest parts would be the apical meristem, the xylem and the phloem. So make sure you can mark those in clearly and perhaps even draw this on your own. So this is a die cut stem. This is a diagram that's frequently encountered and you would know that this is a stem and not a root because firstly you see vascular bundles. So the xylem and the phloem are arranged into these structures known as vascular bundles. And in a root, there would be no vascular bundles. The vascular tissue would be arranged differently and you'll see that a little bit later on. Now you know that this is a die cut stem and not a monocot stem because the vascular bundles are arranged in a circular pattern. So they have a very special arrangement whereas you won't find that in monocots, which I'll show you in a few minutes. On this diagram, make sure that you can mark in where ground tissue is, dermal tissue, and that you can show exactly where xylem is and phloem. So this is the monocot stem and you can see that it is quite similar except for the vascular bundles. They are not arranged in that fixed circular pattern. They're just sort of plopped in the middle there. And that's why I say monocots are messy. But you are not to write monocots are messy in your exam. It's just a funny, easy way for you to remember the difference between monocots and dicots. Say there's no fixed arrangement. The vascular bundles are just placed in the middle and they're scattered. So this is the dicot root. You immediately notice that there's no vascular bundles, so that's how you know it's not a dicot stem. And if you look at the blue in the centre, that's the xylem. It's arranged as that sort of cross or star-like structure. And then the brown structures there are the phloem. So you can see as well the presence of root hairs. All of these features indicate that this is a dicot root and not a dicot stem. This is a new diagram that you won't find in your books. It's a monocot root and I just put it in for comparison. So notice it's completely different to the dicot root. There's no X or star shape for the xylem. And look at the phloem and the xylem. It's arranged quite differently. So this is another diagram. It's a longitudinal section or an LS section of a stem. And just for you to be able to draw in where the xylem is, where the phloem is and where the ground tissue is, just be familiar with it. So next it's the vascular tissue and there is a separate video on this so I'm not going to go into too much detail, you can watch that. So let's talk about xylem, the first of the vascular tissues. It's there to transport water. Xylem, there are two forms, xylem tracheids which are thin and tapered, pointy and then xylem vessels which are much wider and probably therefore much more efficient at transporting water. So one of the aspects of xylem is that it's dead, it's not classed as a living tissue and it's very strong because it's reinforced with this lignin which is laid down in sort of spiral formation and that's there to prevent the inward collapse of the xylem vessels and tracheids when that column of water is being pulled up. Now xylem vessels and tracheids have these pits which allows water to pass from vessel or from tracheid to tracheid sideways and then upwards. So the next type of vascular tissue is phloem. It's there to transport the food made in the leaf down through the plant. It is living tissue. It is living because it has these companion cells attached to these little sieve tube elements and separating each of the sieve tube elements is this sieve plate, a structure with holes in it to allow the material or the food to pass down from one sieve tube element to the next. So this is a transverse section of phloem. So this is possibly one of the more difficult diagrams to decipher and to label if you get this on your paper. And it did cause problems on the Christmas exams. So let's go through each of the parts here. You can see the sieve plates, you can see the sieve tube elements, and you can see those companion cells. And remember, it was Dixon and Jolie from Trinity College in Dublin that came up with the theory of how water is transported in plants, tact. So don't forget that and revise that. There's a separate video. So the last piece of advice I can give you is to learn your ecology definitions. There's simply no time after Christmas to do so and they are vitally important. So if you have not learned them yet, now is the perfect time to learn them. Best of luck. So this video and all the other biology bugbear videos are not meant to replace your textbook 
any textbook or your teacher's guidance. They are not made for monetary gain or intended for commercial use and should only be viewed via the Biology Bugbear's YouTube channel.